everyone, it's Sammy from Sammy Sweet Life, and today I've got my September budget update for you guys. Uh, since this is going up so late in October, I really thought about combining September and October, but there were a couple of major things for September I wanted to talk about in this video. Let's go ahead and jump into the numbers. So you guys know if you've watched any of these videos, I don't go over a lot of specific numbers. I have goal numbers for certain categories in our budget, and I have an overarching goal number for the year, which we met last month. So we are more than good for the rest of the year. We exceeded our goal number, and so we got to splurge a little bit, and by a little bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> I ended up getting an iPhone and an Apple Watch. We talked about both in multiple videos, and you can look for my one month update on both of those, hopefully coming up next week. That's something I plan on filming very soon for you guys. And so I wanna talk about the money part of that. They were not cheap, <laughs> and so, I'm a little bit embarrassed to tell you guys the numbers for this, but you guys know I got the iPhone XS Max, the biggest one. I also got the mid-range storage on here. So I got the, um, I think it's the 256 as far as storage on here, which is plenty for my usage. And then I just got the regular gold aluminum Apple Watch. And so I spent $1,396.40. That is $1,396.40 on the phone. And then I spent $464.39 on the watch. And so altogether, that is $1,860.79. So close to $200. Oh, $200. I wish it was only $200. Um, so that is close to $2,000 in technology, which is something I never do. <laughs> so. This was a, sorry, I'm moving my chair around and wiggling. Um, this is a really big splurge and expense for us. We did meet those savings goals last month, so I really felt like we had the room to just go ahead and get the ones I really wanted, and I got both. I really thought uh, before we even saw the prices, I just had a sneaking feeling that we were gonna do one one month, maybe wait a month or two and do the other one, but I just went ahead, got both, Obviously, I'm talking about this in the budget video. We did pay for these outright. I don't like doing the monthly things. I might get some flack for this, but I feel like if you have to finance your phone, you probably can't afford it. So I just pay the cash for it. And like I said, this is something I don't plan on replacing anytime soon. I don't plan on replacing this yearly. I just don't think from like year to year, it's a huge jump usually. Although before this, I think I got the last version with the more basic camera. I think the camera improved significantly after I got my six and I was really bummed that I didn't just wait a little bit longer to get one with a better camera. And so I'm so excited to have the better camera. It was worth every penny to me, although it hurts like thinking about the money aspect of it. Both of these things are things I use every day and enjoy and they definitely improve my life. And so from that aspect of things, it's worth the money. But when you just look at the money, you're like, oh my gosh, I spent $1,300, almost $1,400 on a phone. It's absurd and ridiculous. I sometimes think it's a little too over the top, even for me, even though I wanted it, even though I use the camera a lot. Uh, it's a lot of money. It's something I definitely didn't take lightly as well. So I compared it with the other iPhones. I definitely wanted to stay with the Apple system because I have a MacBook and I really love iCal. I love certain things about being able to integrate my phone and my laptop really seamlessly. And so it's helped me tremendously having the same ecosystem for everything. I just love the ecosystem. I find it to be really user-friendly for me and really intuitive how things communicate back and forth. And I have really good luck with my phone doing what it needs to do with my computer and I get everything really seamless. It's something I really felt like I never got on a Windows computer, so I'm not good Windows, <laughs> but I really love my Mac and I hope to never go back. <laughs> Once you go Mac, you never go back. <laughs> With all that being said, with $2,000 down the drain on technology, we did not hit our savings goal numbers. We took it out of this month's you know, expenses, and so we did not hit that goal for this month. But even with that considered, 
we have totally more than exceeded our number for the year. So I'm not really sweating that part of it. Of course, I felt like we were in a position that we could absorb the expense of these two things or we wouldn't have even considered it. And so there are three main categories that I usually talk about in more detail in this video. Those are eating out and entertainment. We kind of combine those. We also have a grocery budget and then just a household and extras type of budget. So for those three categories, two out of the three, we went over. So for groceries, we went over by 84.44, which is about what I've been doing. Like most months, it seems like I go a little bit over. And I think that's something I'm gonna raise for the next year. When I redo our budget, I probably will bump that up to 600, just because we're just not hitting it and we're consistently being over in that category. Also in household, we went over by 74.99. And one of the things was kind of weird to put in household, but we ended up doing all the adulting legal documents this last month. So we got wills, we got power of attorneys. So those documents are now done. We went ahead and finally did them. And so they are kind of expensive to do those. You have to get things notarized and that costs a little bit of money too. So that was rolled into that household budget, although it's not like technically a household thing. I went ahead and just put it in there because it's one of those things like, I'm not gonna have like a, a line in the budget for wills and things like that. These kind of like one, one time or very rarely done things. They are just done now. And I'm glad we finally adulted and did those things that we've just been putting off and putting off. It's one of those things that's kind of hard to think about. Like if you die, what do you do? <laughs> and so it's nice to finally have them done. It did feel like a big weight was lifted off our shoulders having this done because it's kind of been on the back of my mind, especially as we're traveling and things. Uh, I think about it again. I was like, oh, we really need to get these things in place. It's really protection for our daughter. And so they're just things that I wanted to have done and we just never got around to doing them until now. So we finally just got them done. I'm so thankful that they're done. That pushed us over a little bit on that household budget. Even though it's not really a householdy type of thing, but I kind of put things in that category that don't really fit other places. And then we were under on eating out by 63.84. So I want to talk about that one a little bit. We weren't really under on that category, but we sold off some things over the course of September and a little bit into October. We sold off just random stuff around the house. That's something I've been working on is decluttering. I did start the 30 day minimalist challenge and I did not make it all the way to 30 days. It's something I probably will do a video on here coming up soon to just kind of wrap that up. But we ended up selling $190 worth of junk from our house. And there are other things that I would like to sell. I just haven't gotten around to like putting in the effort and doing it. But we, we got cash for those things. So it was $190 in cash over um, mostly in September, but a little bit fell into October as well. But we've just put that cash in our wallets and we've used it for things like eating out. And also we used it for traveling. So we did end up going to Indianapolis and Champaign. I talked about that in a recent video. We did end up needing food here and there and paying for things out of that cash. We still have some cash left over that we're still using for eating out here and there or little things here and there. So we were technically under in that like broad category. So what I did as far as the budgeting of the cash, I put the cash in as, you know, miscellaneous income, wrote it at the top. And then um, on the miscellaneous expenses line, I put it in there and then I put a little note saying miscellaneous cash. <laughs> so I know that it's just cash that we had. It shows up in the budget as far as like checks and balances, but I don't have to write down every penny. One of the reasons we use a credit card every month and pay it off is because I like to be able to keep track of it. When I have cash, it just disappears. And so I don't know where the cash goes. I don't have any kind of record of it. And I hate keeping track of cash. And so I really like just using the credit card, paying it off. I get the record, I get the receipts and I can see everything. I don't have to keep track of like pennies and quarters and things like that. I just have it, it's easy. I really wanted to have it as an easy way to like, yeah, we have the cash and I'm just taking it out. Even though physically it's not all spent, it looks like that as far as our budget is concerned. And so I feel like that's a really clean, easy way for me to do it and not have to worry about like, oh, I spent $5 here, $2 here and have to keep track of it. So it's just a really easy way for me to incorporate it in. I'm looking down because I have some notes. As far as that vacation is concerned, we spent about $240 in the vacation. We rented a car, we had to buy some snacks here and there. We used some of the miscellaneous cash I took out in that little section for our vacation fund. Also, we paid for gas. So there were certain things that we ended up having to pay for that came out of that. It was just around $240. 
And then the last thing was my expenses. I have a little allowance line for myself and for Johnny and I went over on mine by $7. I went ahead and got a manicure and a pedicure and I didn't have it in my budget. I went over a little bit in that category, but it was $7.21. So I wasn't over by a whole lot. And last month I was under by like $10.20. So I'm still like technically ahead by a couple of bucks, but it just kind of evens out. And as far as how October is going, I'm way under on my budget for that. So that's something I'll talk more about in my October video. Since October is mostly gone, I have an idea of where everything is for our budget. And one of the major things that happened was my car maintenance. So I'll talk about that in my next budget update for you guys and tell you guys all the same kind of numbers that I'm talking about in this video. My one little bit of advice for you guys is to get those documents done. I just feel really good having the documents in place. I know my kid's protected if anything goes wrong and it's just good to have those things done. Um, it's very adulty, it's boring, it's expensive and annoying to have to do these things and have to think about um, that kind of thing, but it's a really good protection to have in place. And so I'm glad that it's finally done and we finally tackled that adulting step and I recommend you doing it if you haven't done it yet. But that's really it for today. Let me know how your budget's going. If you got some good budget news, I would love to know. I'd love to know how your budget is going. We are moving into the last quarter of the year, three more months left in the year. We are getting into that tricky final stretch of the year where um, things can happen, you know? Christmas is coming budgets can get blown. I wish you guys good luck for the coming up months. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like these budget videos and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.